Revelation 7, 1. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. If we look at the first verse in chapter 7 very closely, these angels are holding the four winds from blowing on the earth. What are these four winds? Let's look back in the Bible. The four winds represents God's judgment. We see in the Bible, in his pledge to destroy Elam, God said in Jeremiah 49 verse 36, I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them to all those winds, and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall not come. Like John, Daniel also saw in a vision the four winds of heaven. He states in Daniel 7.2 that they were stirring up the great sea, which meant Mediterranean Sea. So we see here in Revelation, during the four angels delay, there is no wind that would arise to even shake a tree. There will be no wind to arise to even shake a tree because of these four angels. We see in Revelation chapter 5 when the Lamb took the scroll with seven seals and the seals were being opened one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. In chapter 6, we will see the kinds of creatures that came out of the seal as they were opened. After six of these seals were opened, that was when we are introduced to these four angels. If we follow the order of the Bible, another angel came through and told these four angels something that they must do in Revelation 7-2. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. So here the Bible paints to us a picture where another angel, where another angel flies from the east to these four angels. To tell them something. Now the next logical question for us to ask is what did this angel, what did this fifth angel tell these four angels? Revelation 7.3 answers this. The fifth angel said, do not harm the earth, the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. There is one thing this angel wants to do. He wants to give some set of people the seal of God. This set of people are the selected 144,000 from the tribes of Israel. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed one hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Revelation 7 verse 3 and 4 The identity of the one hundred and forty-four thousand Revelation 14 verse 1 to 3 Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him one hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the hundred and forty-four thousand 
who were redeemed from the earth. In Revelation 7 verse 1 to 8 and 14 verse 1 to 5, the Apostle John described a specific group of 144,000 people. Many Christians say this is merely a large company of believers and the number 144,000 has no special meaning. Others identify themselves as the group itself. But the words John used make it clear that not one of these options is valid. Now the message that the angel gives to these four angels is that they are not to damage the earth, sea or trees until the 144,000 have been sealed. Marked by the cross of Christ. The point of sealing a bond servant on their forehead was to make a statement about a person or make a mark of ownership. It was a mark put on cattle, slaves and any soldier who was considered to be a traitor. God's seal is certainly a protective sign of ownership. The seal signified that the one who was identified by the seal would not experience and was immune from the devastation of God's powerful judgment. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Ezekiel 9 verse 4 In this Old Testament verse in Ezekiel, we read about a mark being put on the forehead of people, and these will then be divinely protected. God tells a man in Ezekiel to go through the whole city and put a saving mark on all of his people who are sad and groaning over the wicked things being committed by the people, and they would be saved. However, if they do not have that mark, they will be completely destroyed. That is the illustration that God has for us regarding this. God knows people individually even when he is pouring out judgments over the world. He knows those who hate sin and he knows who love sin. He knows who love righteousness and hate all the evil that is happening in God's place of worship and he knows those who love to do wicked and perverse deeds. God is in the business of putting saving marks on people so that they escape his judgment. Although the mark may not be visible to the world, it is visible to him. When one believes on Jesus Christ, he is sealed with the saving mark of the Holy Spirit. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14 In Exodus, God had Israel put a saving mark on the doorposts, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Exodus 12 verse 23 in Revelation, during a time known as the Great Tribulation, to 144,000 chosen people, we read about a mark being put on the forehead of people, and they would be saved. 
This is good news, because for those who are sealed, nothing can separate them from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Whenever God authorizes his wrath, those with the saving mark of the faith in Jesus Christ have nothing to fear. But it is terrible news for the unbelievers. Just as the 144,000 Jewish believers will be sealed under God's protection, those who worship the Antichrist will likewise receive an identifying mark of the beast. One group bowing down to Satan and the Christians to Almighty God of the universe. The 144,000 will all be Jewish. They are specifically said to be children of Israel. And I heard the number of them which was sealed, and there was sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Revelation 7 verse 4 The Jewish twelve tribes are literally and specifically named. One does not need to be a brilliant theologian or scholar to clearly see who these 144,000 are. They are related to the twelve sons of Jacob. They come from the twelve tribes of Israel. In conclusion, the 144,000 will be a privileged group of people. They will share the gospel of Jesus Christ to many, fulfilling the words of Jesus. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Matthew 24 verse 14 but any believer in Jesus Christ is and can consider themselves blessed, for they are, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. 1 Peter 2 verse 9